What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back again for another reaction and today's a great, wonderful, beautiful, amazing day. And you know why? I'll tell you why, because it's a Finland day. Weird but <laughs> genius things in Finnish student apartments. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. In this video, I will show you a couple of weird but still awesome things about Finnish homes and specifically Finnish student apartments. Mm. Where is this? It's not Helsinki, is it? Is it? What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we are meeting, my name is Oliver and I'm a master's student in economics at Aalto University here in Finland. And on this channel we we'll talk about education master and economics. early career development, specifically here in Finland. So if you are new here, do consider subscribing. So while the example in this video is a student apartment, uh, many of the things that I'm going to show in this video actually apply to Finnish homes in general, especially when we're talking about more modern and new buildings. Anyways, let's go check them out. I don't think I've seen a modern or new building in Finland yet, so this might be interesting. Let's have a look. You have keys for all your dolls, Alright, so the you? first thing about Finnish homes that a lot of international people wonder about are actually the windows. So in Finland, basically every single building has at least double glazing, while some might even have triple glazing. Me yeah, you guys need it. It's freezing in Finland. I'm not surprised you have double glazing. In the UK, all our windows are double glazing. We don't tend to have triple glazing because it doesn't get that cold. But um, we do have double because it does get cold. So we, I get it. Meaning that you have at least two or three uh, window panes in the window itself. For example, here we have Whoa. two different uh, window panes insulating the room from outside. So the biggest reason here is actually insulation because in the winter when it's really cold the double glazing makes sure that our homes stay warm however in addition to the heat insulation as you can actually hear the double glazing also works as a really sound. good sound insulation mm. meaning that with a good set of double windows you can actually barely hear the sound from the street below if that's pretty good like yeah sound in the insulation that's especially like him where he lives on a main road he, he won't be distracted by outside noise that's really good that's very good. But what I will say though, having triple glazing, we have this issue in the UK with it, just with double glazing. So I can't imagine how you guys must feel with triple. What happens when it's summer and you have an unseasonably warm summer and it's very, very hot? What do you do when you've got triple glazing insulating your home and the sun is beating down on your home? It must be like a furnace. It must be so hot in Finnish homes during an a, a unseasonably warm or heat wave in Finland. Let me know in the comment section what you guys do, because obviously you don't have air conditioning. Most European, Northern European and Scandinavian, Nordic, those areas where they're closer to the um, North Pole, <laughs> Arctic, no, most places, most houses don't have air conditioning. So let me know what you guys do to cool off during the summer if um, your houses are so well insulated, especially with global warming. Let me know. If we actually test this for an example, the window is open and the window is closed. So actually a similar thing is happening with our doors as well. So it's really common in Finnish apartment buildings to actually have double doors. Uh, the light is absolutely terrible, oh. but so it's normal to have double doors uh, again Not only do that does this help with the uh, heat insulation But mo more importantly this actually helps with soundproofing the apartment and you guys like really like locking yourself when you're inside your home <laughs> You're behind triple glass and double doors. Wow You can't get out of you can't get out really quickly this makes a huge difference when you think about voices coming from the corridor inside to your apartment. Uh, second thing, actually a funny thing that I heard from a, an international friend of mine about the door, double doors is that actually that also prevents people from peeking through the mail, mail slots or boxes that we have. Uh, that is actually something that he said that he really likes because in their home country that is actually 
uh, possible to peek, peek through. But yeah, so double doors ah. basically. And the second thing that you really need to understand about the doors in Finland, how they work, is the locks, how the locks work. And I know that this might sound really funny, but I've heard way too many stories of internationals, uh, especially Locking students, getting out. locked outside of their apartments because they did not know about this. So in Finland, when you actually close a door behind you, the door actually locks, locks itself. Behind. So you don't have to turn or you actually cannot, in some cases, turn a key to actually lock the door. Rather, the door will automatically lock behind you. So, um, Yeah, if I lived in Finland, I'm, I'm a, quite a forgetful person. I would have to cut an extra key and give it to somebody that I know, family, friend, to keep an extra key just in case I lock myself out. Because knowing me, I will leave the key inside and I will leave. So yes, <laughs> it's just, I, I will. So I would need an extra key. So it's really important to have your keys with you every time you leave the apartment and close the door behind you. Yeah. So while we're talking about doors and locks, it's also good to mention what kind of keys we actually use in Finland. So this only mm. applies to buildings that have these modern electric locks. However, for example, in this building, we use these kind of smart electric uh, keys that are really, really cool. So how these work is Smart that these are actually coded to work with specific doors in your building. So you basically need just one key for all the different doors that you, you can actually have access to. So also how this works is that oh. when you actually move out from your apartment, you will return the key to your landlord, who will then repurpose by recoding the key to work for the next tenant. But yeah, this is really cool because you basically just need one key for the entire building instead of, you know, having one for the outer door, for your own door. How does that work? I'm just trying to, in my head, just under this thing, I was trying to think, figure out how you could have one key that would work for different locks. It just obviously doesn't change shape for every lock you put it in, but it's, there must be some mechanical mechanism that unlocks the door or allows the door to be unlocked electronically. But for me, it's like, if you can program a key to be like that, to change for every lock, why don't you just, why don't you just have, um, cards like electronic cards like in my apartment we have an electronic card that lets us in the lift that lets us in the um, um apartment and all that type of stuff why don't you just have a card instead of having a key and having to turn it's confusing to me do you know what i mean if it's electronic and it can change for every lock then you should just have a card that works for your apartment and for the front door I don't know. Does that make sense? Let me know if there are apartments like that in Finland. Or then one for the storage room, etc. So yeah, card. these are awesome. All right, so the next thing applies specifically to a lot of student apartments in Finland, and that is that most student apartments actually do not have a dishwasher pre-installed. In my experience, only large shared student apartments might have a dishwasher, but okay. in general, this is very rare. So if you really don't want to wash your dishes by hand, you have to buy a dishwasher yourself. And actually talking about this, an That's additional note that applies to all apartments in Finland is that if you buy a dishwasher, you also have to hire a professional plumber to install it in your apartment. So why this is so important is that if you install the machine yourself and it leaks, your insurance company will not cover any of the damages caused by the leaking. So why would you want to buy a dishwasher? For me, maybe it's where I was brought up. My, I was always, we didn't have a dishwasher when I was a kid. Um, and we just wash dishes in a basin by hand with a sponge <laughs> or cloth. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I just don't get the concept of having a dishwasher. I just never have really. You put it in a dishwasher, you semi, you semi rinse it and then you put it in the dish. It's just loads of extra steps when you could just, it's not going to take much longer to wash it by hand. Dishwashers are overrated for me. I don't really care too much for a dishwasher, but some people do and it uses a lot of water as well doesn't that cost money and electricity it's just, I just don't see the point in them when you can use a pack. so do you know that appliance stores usually sell the installation as an additional service and it costs like 20 to 50 euros depending on the store so I really recommend that you don't skimp here but simply pay the extra money for the delivery and installation so that you don't have to worry about this at all 
So because a lot of apartments, especially, you know, student apartments don't have dishwashers, we of course have to wash our dishes by hand. And because of course you don't want to have all of your dishes drying on the counter oh, because it's made, all messy uh, and yucky, basically around. this Finnish invention saves all the trouble. So basically what this is, is a drying rack for your dishes. And this is something <laughs> that... I love how this features in all the videos about apartments and houses in Finland. Like this actually is an ingenious invention. And like, I keep saying it, but it should be adopted around the world. I really do. Basically, Even every though single Finnish so household simple, has pre-installed no in nowhere their else kitchens. Been, the way this simply works is that you houses. have the dishes drying here in the cabinet, out of sight, out of mind, and the water will drip directly into the sink, making everything much more tidier and nicer so uh, compared to if you had actually all the dishes drying here on the counter and spreading the water all over the place. To be fair, I don't think that would be hard to install yourself. Like if I, like if, do you know what? when when i do purchase a house in the future we will get one of these we'll get one of these drying racks it's so much neater all right next let's actually move into the washing room and check out what kind of things we have there in normal finnish households Okay. So in Finland, it's actually quite normal for people not to buy a drying machine in addition to their washing machines. So unless you have a large apartment with a very large bathroom or a dedicated laundry room, a lot of the times we don't actually have enough space here to have a tower installed. Rather, people usually air dry their clothes using drying racks. So these kind of drying yeah. racks are super common in Finnish households. Yeah. And while they do take a bit of space and it takes a bit of manual work to, to set everything to dry, these actually have some really cool benefits to them as well. Yeah, drying racks, we have, I have one outside right now. The best of them being that drying like this actually expands the lifespan of your clothes because this is much more delicate than, for example, spitting your clothes spitting. in a dryer, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. So talking about laundry, the next awesome thing about Finnish apartment buildings is the growing use of shared laundry rooms. Laundry rooms. So using a common laundry room has its pros and cons. First, this naturally saves you quite a bit of money because you don't have to buy a washing machine nor a dryer because these laundry rooms usually have dedicated dryers that you can use. Second, this will naturally save you some money in water and electricity costs because of the cost of the laundry rooms is already taken into account in your rent. Uh, That's really good because, I mean, I was trying to think it's my laundry on right now, but it's not. But laundry, yeah, it loses a lot of electricity and doing it in a shared laundry mat makes sense it saves you a lot of money and they do that in sweden as well right sweden they have laundry laundry rooms as well uh, finally using a common laundry room naturally saves quite a bit of space in your apartment however mm. there are also a couple of cons about these common spaces as well first of all if you have a very sensitive skin and you can't use any kind of softeners or scented detergents using these common laundry machines might actually not be suitable this is because they are used by a lot of people in your building and there is always some residue left from other people's detergents and that might actually That's become true. a problem if you have a very sensitive skin a second con would of course be that you can't wash your clothes whenever you want because you have to first reserve a machine for a certain time slot and those might not always be available when you need them anyways for the next thing we need to take the elevator upstairs upstairs what's, on, what's upstairs has it got a pool all right, so the next Gym. thing on this list is something super important and it's something that you can find in every single Finnish apartment building and that is of course the sauna. Ah, uh, sauna. The... So saunas are a super important part of the Finnish culture and we have almost 2 million saunas for a population of about 5.3 million people. So the basic concept of sauna is super simple. So all saunas have a basket of rocks that are heated by a wooden or in this case an electric stove. When you throw water on top of the warm rocks, you increase the humidity in the room and uh, this is what we call löylü. And the steam that this no. generates increases the feeling of heat and it makes you sweat. This also makes you feel extremely relaxed and it's almost like a purifying uh, experience. So again, as with many other things on this list, 
it's, 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 I find it strange that you just have a sauna, but you don't have like a swimming pool or like a steam room or like it's just a sauna by itself. It's really interesting. How and where a sauna in your building has been built depends on the age of the building. In many old buildings, especially in the city, saunas okay. are usually built in the underground areas and many of them actually double as bomb shelters. However, what I think is awesome is that in many really? modern buildings like this one, uh, we have the sauna on the rooftop just like this. So this is actually right. brilliant because not only do you get a terrace where you can actually cool off between Lulu, but the atmosphere is just out of this world. And of course, this also functions as a great terrace during the summer. So before yeah. any Finns watching this start writing angry comments about this being an expensive area and that rooftop saunas are still rare, yes, that <laughs> is true. The area where this student building resides is pretty much brand new, but it also represents yeah. a new way of building and utilizing space. And these kind of facilities are built more all the time. Again, how so this is not like the common thing in Finland. This is like the new style this is a new build it's the the money area <laughs> how this works is that we basically have the sound behind these windows and then we have this awesome massive rooftop terrace where we can actually come and cool off between load before we continue to the next section of this video let me just stop for a second to thank hoas for their continuous support with this channel. So HOAS, or the Foundation for Student Housing in the Helsinki region, is a non-profit foundation that so rents, Helsinki, builds and maintains then, then. housing for students in the Helsinki metropolitan area. I've been living in their apartments throughout my studies, and I really recommend that you apply for one of their almost 10,000 student apartments in the Helsinki region. More information about HOAS and their apartments through the links in the description box below. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is that in Finland, we like to recycle as much as we can. In older and say normal apartment buildings, you would have different recycling bins at minimum for mixed bio, cardboard, glass and metal. However, mm. nowadays it's also really common that apartment wow. buildings also separate their plastics as many buildings have a separate bin for those as well. So normally you guys take recycling serious. Look at the color co coded things and like, Honestly, like in the UK, it's not like that. You'd be lucky to get a bin for plastics. You're lucky to get that. You, you literally look at it. I know some apartment complexes and buildings where they just have one massive industrial size bin, massive bin, and you just put anything in there. Cardboard, plastic, glass, wet food, like everything. Um, but this is this is so good for the environment. We need to step up our game, Finland. You're ahead uh, of the game. Normally, you would have a kind of a shed where you have all the waste bins together. However, we live in a new residential area that has been built only after 2012. And this area is actually a testing ground for this really cool new waste disposal system called Röri. This entire massive residential area uses these kind of pipes that you can use to recycle all, all your trash. So these pipes actually have suction and they lead to a single centralized waste processing space where the garbage truck goes to collect them. This means wow. that we have no bins, meaning that the yards are much cleaner and we don't have any problems with overflowing bins because a so efficient so efficient and i know this is like a posher area of finland but if this is what your posher area is like then i can tell that you're recycling um your sustainability ethos in your whole country must be very very good a truck is laid or something like that. So this is really cool and it's already implemented in a multiple new residential areas in the Helsinki region. Also since these pipes and bins that you would normally have do not necessarily have individual units for things like glass, metal or large waste, many residential areas also have these separate recycling containers where you can drop off most of the things that you cannot recycle or dispose in your building itself. Also since none of these uh, collection bins or uh, containers have bins for hazardous materials like batteries, nail polish, bottles or similar items, there are separate recycling systems for them as well. For example, it is pretty common nowadays that electronic stores have a recycling service where you can simply drop off your old electronics without any charge and they will take care of the recycling for you. What's this? So most apartment buildings in Finland have what we call Hackivarasto, that you could roughly translate as 
cage storage. So what this means is cage storage that we have these small storage spaces that each household has and where you can store basically whatever you want. That is so good. That is really, really good. Because, you know, apartments are quite small, right? So the storage space is can and tends to be an issue. Like, I'm in an apartment right now, and we only have the storage that's in the apartment. But if we had a little storage unit at the bottom of the apartments that we had to ourselves, and we could just put, like, stuff, we'd use it. But one bad thing, though, is that you'd accumulate stuff, you know? Like, sometimes you just... You could throw it out, but you're like, oh, I'll just put it in the storage unit. Ah, uh, what's this? Well, uh, we might use it in the future, maybe. I don't know. Let's put it in the storage unit. And then you tend to... When you move out, you have all this stuff in there, and that could be an issue. But apart from that, it's really, really good that they provide this space. Still, a couple of things to keep in mind. First, you need to get your own lock into the doors. And second, right. these cages very rarely have electric sockets, so you cannot have anything that uh, needs to draw electricity in these spaces. So many right. older buildings in Finland have these uh, storage rooms underground or at the attic. So usually if the storage is in the attic, these spaces are actually not heated. So you need to take that into account when you think about what kind of things you want to store here. However, more and more of the new buildings in Finland have these uh, storage spaces on the street level, which is great because it's really convenient when you, for example, move in or out because the door opens directly to the street where you can pack the car or, for example, a van. All right, so the next awesome thing is actually behind this door. And as you can see from the icon, this is actually a bicycle storage. Again, as we... You guys have thought of everything, right? Bicycle storage, actual storage, recycling, Finland. Oh, laundry room. Efficient. I was saying this in my last video, you're very efficient. And I like that with the previous storage rooms these uh, bicycle storage rooms have traditionally been built underground so that they don't take any of the expensive ground level space that could be so occupied good. for example by a cafe or something else however nowadays we see more and more of these on the street level which again is awesome because it makes using this space and your bicycle super easy these storage spaces are great not only because you can store your bike inside during the winter, but also because it's a great way to store your more expensive bikes inside, preventing them from being stolen from the street. Exactly, because now more and more people have more expensive bikes, electric bikes, you know, e-bikes, e e-electrical assisted bikes, um, moped style bikes. There's a lot of bikes that cost a lot of money and you don't want them to just be laid around on the street because they will get stolen. So this is really good to have this. is is really, really, really good. I really want to buy a bicycle, an e-bike. Um, this is the <laughs> this is a side note. I really want an e-bike. really do. And I'm probably going to get one in the future. Um, but yeah. And I think Finland's a really good place to ride a bike. So... Maybe I'll do that and I'll bring my bike with me to Finland. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, there are a lot of really cool, but maybe weird things that we do in Finland, especially with newer and more modern apartment buildings. I know that these are still pretty rare and not all buildings are like this. So I'd love to hear about your experience with Finnish homes. Personally, what do you find interesting or odd about Finnish homes? And which of these solutions would you like to see in your home country? Next up, I recommend that you watch this video and go through this entire playlist where I talk about things that you need to know about Finland. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. I like his video. I am going to subscribe. He's got other stuff. Want to study in Finland? No. Five weird things you must know about Finnish people. Maybe I'll do that next. <laughs> guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.